as I've been without the tractor for a bit more than a week and in this time I was just cutting down the trees and it became a bit of a mess because I was just falling a tree over a tree. Usually I try to avoid this but this time I was without the tractor and it was the only work I was able to do. I've chopped down around uh, 20 trees and there's one over the other. Here you can clearly see there are four trees, one right above the other. It's not that it's that hard to get them out, it just takes more time. It's hard to come close and clean the branches. If I wanted to do something in the period that I was without tractor, this was the only way. It's also a bit more complicated because I cannot come close with the tractor and there is a lot of big rocks and usually the logs get stuck behind the rock and then I have to make a I have to take the cable around the tree so it pulls to the side and that takes a lot of time when you're alone just going up and down the tractor. I did maybe 10 meters on the road and there's already many rocks stuck in the bark which is really not good for peeling and for the chainsaw work later and that's why I want to leave the logs as soon as possible off the ground but at the moment there's no other way I have to pull them up on the road and then I have to turn with the tractor because otherwise I cannot directly pull them in the direction I want there's too many trees around and the road is too narrow. I would not be able to do the turn with the log attached to the back of the tractor. I forgot all the ropes that I used to fasten the dolly to the log before when I took the previous log to, to the build site and now I will try to use the pulley to somehow attach the dolly to the log and hopefully I'll be able to make it to where I'm peeling the logs. Usually I use two belts or ropes to attach one in the front and one in the back so the log doesn't swing. If I attach just in the front then the log will swing to the side and the wheels will curve out of the road. I will try to go slower and hopefully I make it. I doubt that this will make it because it's impossible to to tie good with this pulley. If I would be able to make another click but this was pretty much what I expected. The log went to the side and now the wheels are steering out of the road. If I'm able to Put it back in the center of the amazing. Oof. I hope I can save it this time because it's really 
on the edge of falling over. This was not an easy one. The last 500 meters of the road are pretty rough with a lot of rocks. I had to stop like five times. There were a few moments when the where the log just barely stayed on, but somehow I made it, and I'm really happy about that. That I did. I didn't have to return and take the ropes. That's not really what I expected, but it went, all went good, so that was fun.
This is the biggest log of this round and I think also until now that was exactly what I meant by going up and down the tractor and I also got all the other bigger logs out so now I only have to take out the smaller logs and these bigger logs I take one at a time because they are really heavy I'm pretty sure there is around two cubic meters of wood in this log that's around a ton and a half I'm also trying to come up with some other ways to lift up the logs and I've got some uh, great ideas in the comments and I will try out those uh, suggestions in the next week. Maybe I find something easier and less back breaking than this method. Although this method is working pretty fine and it's not that dangerous or anything, it just takes some time and a lot of energy. Actually, it was way easier lifting this log than before when I did two or three at a time. I've got a new idea today to lift the logs by attaching the pulley to the tree and then just using the cable from the tractor to lift them up and if this pulley will be strong enough I think this way will be much easier than how I did it before. Just the lifting part is way easier than before but you don't save much time because you have to unchain the logs then put the chains in the back then you have to lift then you have to again unchain and put the chains in the front and if you look at the time it's pretty much like with the other method I used before but it's just way easier to lift them up.
I finally got all the logs out of the forest and it took me a good week from the day I started cutting this round of trees till now and I think another good week of peeling is gonna follow. It's the hardest part of this work and it really destroys you. Especially now that I have here uh, I think 16 logs and they are pretty big, bigger than the ones I did before. But before I start with the peeling I want to expand the ramp so I can fit all the logs in just one row. At first I thought about doing three or four rows of logs but then I was thinking when I will start building a log house if I will need the log that is under it will be really hard to get it out. So I decided to expand the ramp and hopefully I can fit all the logs in just one row. That way any log I will need it will be easy to get it out. At the moment I have 25 logs peeled and I have to do another 50, maybe 45, I'm not sure. I want to do a few more just to have a bit of extra if some are too curved or there are some problems with the, with the logs. I've decided to just simply drag these logs as I'll be using them only for the ramp I don't really care it's gonna be much faster I can drag maybe 10 logs without any problem if I would do this with a dolly I would need to go three or four times and it has been a really long time since the weather was this nice absolutely no clouds today no wind no rain is it feels uh, a bit strange since there was, I don't know, more than a month that or it was raining or it was wind or snow or there was always something. <laughs>
<clears throat> Today it truly doesn't feel like it's winter. I can be in shorts and it's still too hot. And I just found this spider that usually you find them in the summer. He's a bit slow probably because it's not hot enough for for him to warm up, but he still came out. I think this will be all for today. I'm starting to feel uh, pretty tired. I've been working consistently for the last month or even more than for a month. When you start to feel tired and you do this heavy work, it's really easy to get injured. You can injure your back or you do some mistake with a chainsaw. And it's hard to take a break on a day like it is today, but uh, it's very important and you have to listen to your body. Take a break and come back stronger and focused on what you're doing. But today is really one of those days in the middle of the winter. It's just perfect, not too, ho not too hot, not too cold. I can work in a t-shirt which is unbelievable for December. I just wish it would last forever but probably it's not gonna last more than a day or two and then it's gonna be fog uh, and rain again. That's just how it is here during the winter. If the wind comes from the south, then it rains and it's fog. If the wind comes from the, from the north, then it's cold and snow or just really strong wind. So I will enjoy this day and take a break. And I know that on the video this work looks much easier and really fun, which for me it is. I enjoy every moment of of this journey but a lot of people write to me that they would love to come and help me and there were many friends that came and after a day or two they just realized that it's not that easy as it looks it's either you love and you are truly truly passionate about doing it or you will give up after a few days I don't regret taking a bit of break this afternoon. The view is absolutely amazing. It's truly indescribable. There are clouds in the valley and a bit of clouds above with the colors of uh, sunset. It's just something uh, unbelievable. I've seen many sunsets, 
but today is something really special. It's been a long time that I took a break from work to go enjoy the sunset, but don't know why today I felt like I need to. I truly felt something telling me that I just need to take a break and relax. I've done the ramp and now I have to roll all the peeled logs onto the new ramp. While I will do that, I will also measure the diameter on both ends of the logs and write everything down and also write if some are curved or there is some rot or just anything specific. And I will also number all the logs so when I will start with the building of the log house I will kind of know which logs I will use for the frame and which for the flooring and for the roof. And if I will need a log of certain diameter, I will look on the, on the paper and then I will just look on the number and I hope this will make the things much easier and much faster so that I will not have to search through all the logs and look which could be the right one. This was the first log I've peeled 
and when I cut the tree down the tree was already dead and I can see that there are some worms or some insects that already got into the log so I think this log will be used or for the boards or for something else but I don't want to use it for the framing of the log house I measured the logs around half a meter from the beginning because right at the beginning till here there's a big difference and then from here on it doesn't change so much but still at uh, seven meters and a half in length there's around uh, eight to ten centimeters of uh, change in diameter which later on I will have to alternate the, the logs one time the big side on on one end and then the opposite so you kind of balance out this uh, this difference in the diameter I didn't expect this to be so hard but there's a bit of uphill throughout all the ramp and that makes it so much more difficult like usually I did it just in time now it's pretty much dark I cannot see much 
you can see the logs because they are they are peeled maybe too good. They are just shining. When it comes to the log house, it's like I said before, there is no easy job. There are just some things that are easier than others. Everything you have to do with logs, it just takes a lot of energy. Or if you have the right tools, the lift and everything, but unfortunately, I don't have that. And I'm trying to keep it on the budget as much as possible. And when you want to do it that way, you have to work that much harder. At least I will not need to go to the gym anytime soon. I just need to stretch and really take care of the back. Otherwise you can mess up your back really quick. Tomorrow I will continue with the peeling and I will try to beat my personal record for the most peeled logs in one day. So far I did five and I will try to go for six. I also have the light because the days are really short so I will continue in the night. So far I needed on an average a bit more than an hour for one log. So that would mean uh, seven hours of peeling without uh, any breaks. Usually when I work, I'm the type of person that when I work, I work and if I take a break, I take a break. But when I start peeling, uh, for me it's hard to, to stop until I don't finish what I have in mind. But anyway, I will not try to force it. If I will see that I'm able to do it, I will go for it. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. It's just more, a, more of a personal challenge. And that's also how I motivate myself for, to work and to keep on going. I always set myself like little challenges. Today I will do six logs and if I don't do it, I don't do it. But it's a really good way to motivate yourself. Also another great motivation for filming and for keep on going with this journey is a lot of you guys that comment on my videos. I got a lot of suggestions how to make some, some things easier like lifting the logs or a lot of other great ideas. Thanks to everyone that took the time, shared the, their experience, their knowledge with me or liked the video, shared the video, just watched anything it it's great seeing this feedback and having a sense of a bit of community if you enjoyed this video let me know what i could change or any suggestions you have regarding to the work or anything else and i think this will be all for this episode